Hi, welcome if you're just joining us. So we're going to ask you to notice, think back over your week, and in the chat, mention um, what you found beautiful or excellent in your week over the last week. So for me, last night, I opened my back door and saw this gorgeous sunset. It was red and purple, and then there's this little bunny hopping along, and so that just gave me a lot of joy and I yelled for my husband to come look. So it was beautiful. Sari, what about you? Yeah, so this morning on my walk, um, I actually woke up early enough to catch the sunrise. So uh, I'm calling from Texas and Texas sunrises are beautiful. They're like purple and reds and oranges. Um, and so I was able to appreciate that beauty this morning. Excellent. So here I see a deer. Melissa says that a deer was sleeping under some trees, which that would be so great. To see. That's awesome. Three puppies playing together. Stephanie shared. Oh, that's so cute. I love it. Okay, Sarah, you want to get us started at least, and people yeah. can continue to, to share. Yeah, so as you guys are continuing to put your appreciation of beauty and excellence moments in the chat, um, as Catherine said, welcome. We are so glad you're with us today um, and that you decided to spend a little bit of your Monday afternoon with us. Um, my name is Sari Wilson, and like Catherine, we both graduated from the Masters of Applied Positive Psychology program at Penn. Um, and last year, I actually centered my final research on integrating positive psychology, virtue, happiness, and spirituality. So today, we're hoping to share a little bit of that um, research that uh, we that both of us uh, looked at last year um, and Catherine was actually my advisor so uh, that that was you know such a, a special relationship that we had um, and she helped really think about this connection between spirituality and positive psychology um, and so we're going to share a little bit of that with you today um, but before we begin I think it's helpful to ground ourselves in the purpose and the roadmap of our time together I always like to know where we're going in in sessions um, and so this session, like I said, is going to focus on that intersection between spirituality, faith, and the science of virtue and happiness. Um, and it is our hope that you will walk away knowing a little bit more about how these concepts connect um, and like applicable things that you can bring into your own practice um, with your own faith or spiritual tradition. So where we're going. The first part of the session, we're going to talk more about the history of virtue, character, and happiness research, and then how that connects to centuries-old traditions. Um, and then through the lens of a Catholic prayer called the examine, we're going to actually experience one example of how this could look when you integrate uh, character and virtue within um, a spiritual practice. And then finally, Catherine and I will walk you through a few easy steps on how you can apply this character uh, these character strengths practices to your own faith or spiritual tradition. All right, with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Catherine. Yeah, so why do we care from a positive psychology standpoint? Well, I mean, traditionally, faith or spirituality might have some type of supernatural benefit, but positive psychologists are interested in the human element, the natural element. So there is a ton of research that shows that those that have a spiritual religious practice uh, increase and grow in human flourishing and well-being. And they're also protected uh, against depression and suicidal ideation. They're, they're less likely to experience those. So that's why positive psychology, the field cares about it. What is surprised me, and I actually ran across this research recently, is that it's not the belief that matters, it's the actual practice. So you could have a belief uh, in the supernatural, the divine, or, um, and, or you believe in certain spiritual practices, but if you don't actually put them into practice and act on them, then there's no benefit. It's the, it's the same effect as if not uh, having the belief, which is pretty amazing. When, when Sari and I were looking at this, we're both Catholics, uh, just, you know, to let you know where we're coming from, we thought, well, what's a way of integrating our faith life and, and what we know from positive psychology? And we, we thought um, a natural connection would be over the modern science of character, strength, and virtue. 
So there is a lot of research that says there's over at least 350 papers that say practicing your character strengths and virtues leads to greater well-being. And this isn't new necessarily. Aristotle has been, you know, he mentioned that the good life is living out the virtuous life um, thousands of years, but we haven't had the scientific empirical evidence from a hypothesis-driven approach that that's definitely the case. And now, since they've developed the via character strengths, we can now show that people actually do thrive. And it turns out pretty much every faith tradition, major one in the world, does have a kind of code of virtue. Yeah, and, and what Catherine says is true. I mean, what we're seeing is that um, when we lean into these character strengths and virtues and, and actually practice these things in our lives, um, we're seeing increases in positive emotions. We're seeing increases in positive relationships and connections with others. Um, and we're also seeing, you know, increased engagement at work and at home um, and, and increases in meaning and purpose. So we're seeing across the board that like when we practice uh, what Aristotle preached, that virtue really does lead to greater well-being and happiness. Um, and I think one of the coolest parts about this research that I found was that it really centered around these ancient wisdom traditions. Um, and so these researchers thought a lot about like, if we were to look across the globe, across different common or different, you know, traditions and um, faith traditions and philosophical traditions, what would we see uh, regarding virtue? And would we see common universal virtues um, to really like scour the globe for this? Um, and when they looked at various faith and philosophical traditions, they did find some common virtues and common character strengths across all. Um, and to give you guys an example of what that looks like is they looked at Confucian virtues, they looked at Athenian virtues, um, they looked at Judaism, they looked at Hinduism, Taoism, uh, Islam, they looked at Buddhism, uh, and uh, of course, Christianity and Catholicism, which Catherine and I mentioned. So they looked across various faith traditions um, and really found these grounding virtues um, across all. And what they found was they found six universal virtues and underneath these six virtues, they found 24 character strengths that really are the practice of virtues um, across all of these. And so what you see on your screen here, um, and some of you might be familiar with this if you've taken the VIA Character Strength Survey from the VIA Character Institute. Um, and if you haven't, uh, it's like a good next step maybe from this session. Um, the six virtues that are on the left-hand side are the six universal ubiquitous virtues Choose that they found when they looked at all of these different traditions. Um, transcendence, courage, humanity, justice, wisdom, temperance. Um, and then what you see on the right hand side of your screen is you see all the character strengths. These are the 24 strengths that really are the building blocks to virtues. Um, and so I kind of look at them like there are practice mechanisms. Um, so for example, if you were practicing the strength of love, you would be building the virtue of humanity or practicing curiosity, uh, which is one of my top character strengths, uh, builds the virtue of wisdom. And like, I guess when I was first introduced to this science, it made me feel uh, like, like a weight was lifted off. You know, like virtue can seem pretty nebulous and like, yeah, I wanna be a really good person. I want to like have more wisdom. I wanna have uh, more transcendence in my life, but like, how do I go about doing that? And what the character strengths really help us to do is like, these are like those building blocks, um, like on this pathway to building this virtue over, over a lifetime. Um, and something that we didn't mention before, but I wanna make sure I mention here, is that after taking the VIA character strength survey, which um, if you haven't taken it, I totally recommend it, it's free um, and it's, it's a pretty quick survey. Um, you're gonna notice that you have a set of signature, like the, the researchers call these signature strengths or your top strengths. Um, which typically is around like your top five. Um, and these are the strengths that are the ones that you uniquely lean into more often and typically with ease, right? And what we're finding in the research is that when we use our signature strengths, so really leaning into the best of who we are um, and our most authentic selves, this leads to our greater well being and flourishing. Um, and so for me, like my number one strength is creativity. Um, and I know that when I lean into create, uh, creativity and I'm creating, I feel, um, I feel more positive in my life. I feel like I'm connecting with others more. Um, and so really thinking about those top character strengths in that way. And as we mentioned before, 
this virtue research was centered on many different faith perspectives and, and philosophical traditions. And so as, practicing, as a practicing Catholic, I worked on mapping these virtues um, and connecting them to the foundations of my spiritual and faith tradition. So what you see on the screen is the mapping um, that I made, uh, really aligning like these six virtues in the via to the seven virtues uh, in Catholicism. So for example, transcendence really maps and aligns with uh, the Catholic virtues of faith and love. Um, and some you'll see like temperance actually just maps directly with temperance. Um, and so very, there's a lot of commonality here um, and probably uh, so in your, your own faith and spiritual traditions. And the last, but definitely not least, um, one more thing to note is that this research in virtue and uh, character really like takes not just awareness, but also action. So this like combination of awareness and action. Um, and obviously awareness is the first step, right? To be aware of your top strengths, to be aware of character strengths um, in your life is, is really important, but it also really matters that you're putting into practice um, and taking action on these, on building these virtues. Um, and so Ryan Nemec, who is one of, you know, the, the leading researchers in this field, likes, I love how he likes to say that character strengths are both being and doing. So they're like who we are, they're a lot of who we are, but also what we do in the world. Um, and Catherine and I, when we thought about this, like it's both this awareness and action, we were really trying to find like, what is a spiritual practice that exists in Catholicism that really speaks to the heart of this awareness and action? Um, and dun, 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 enter the exam in. Um, guys, the exam is so exciting and I'm, I'm really excited to share that with you today. Um, the exam is a spiritual prayer, a Catholic spiritual prayer um, that really centers on this idea of awareness and of action. Um, and it was created by this guy, uh, St. Ignatius, who was a Spanish mystic in the 1500s. Um, and it's a daily prayer. So you practice this daily and it's centered on both awareness of God, self and others, and on building hope and action uh, in the future. And typically individuals will use this prayer at the end of the day, but it can really be used whenever. Um, and in a moment, we're gonna experience an example of this exam in, uh, that's specifically centered on a, a, a unique character strength. Um, but I really, I wanted to like tee you guys up. You're gonna hear, there's five distinct parts of the exam in. Um, so you'll hear gratitude, response, opportunities, forgiveness, and resolution. So as I'm leading you through this exam in, uh, you'll hear those five parts. Um, and it's gonna be centered on specifically the character strength of appreciation of beauty and excellence, which you already started to prime at the beginning of the session. Yeah, thanks, Sari. And just so you know, while she's setting up that meditation, she's already pre-recorded it. And, um, you know, we are just sharing with you an example of how we've used it. Our intention is not to proselytize. Um, we are just trying to, I teach design thinking, so we're trying to show you how we've done it and not just tell you about it. And so enter into it as best as you can. Um, but it is a prayer, like the God will be mentioned um, and we will follow, you know, those rough steps, but we've taken what we've learned and, um, and, and we are excited to share with you, but also know that we're just, we're using this as an example. And we really hope that you integrate it into your own faith tradition. All right, I think we're ready to go. So go ahead and get comfortable um, and I will put it on. The examine is a way of prayer that helps us to see God working more clearly in our lives and build awareness and practice of our own character strengths and virtues that are modeled after our Heavenly Father's strengths. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. Sit comfortably in your chair, just finding some stillness and begin to close your eyes. I want you to imagine how God is looking at you with all your spiritual gifts in a gaze of love. 
God is looking at you as his beloved with all the unique strengths he is endowed in you simply because you exist. He says, you are beautiful because I am beautiful. You are loved because I am love. Your gifts reflect his image. The focus today and into this week is on the strength of appreciation of beauty and excellence tied to the virtue of transcendence or for Catholics, the virtues of faith and hope. We use appreciation of beauty and excellence when we are attuned to the beauty we find in everyday experiences, nature, and others. Using this strength may also look like us noticing excellence in others, maybe a special talent or skill or virtuous action. When we are drawn to the wonder and awe of a sunset or stop to relish in the excellence of art beautifully created, we are practicing this unique strength as we discover the wonderful mark of the creator in our lives. Our beautiful and excellent God models this appreciation for us. For as the lover in Song of Songs speaks to his lover, arise my friend, my beautiful one, and come. For see, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, and the song of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs and the vines in bloom give forth fragrance. Arise, my friend, my beautiful one. Look back over your day and relive each moment starting from the moment you woke up. Intentionally think back over your day. What situations of beauty or excellence did you notice today? What happened in this moment? Was anyone else present? What was particularly beautiful or virtuous about this moment? Relive this now, appreciating the beauty or excellence and just thank God for it. Continue to look through your day and think about the moments where God could be calling you to use the gift of appreciating beauty and excellence. In what ways might he be calling you to find beauty in the unexpected? Or where might you be called to notice excellence or virtue in another person? How might God be speaking to you through this? And while this is not a time of dwelling too long on shortcomings, 
Gently look at how you could have used more appreciation of beauty and excellence today, but did not do so. Where might you have focused on flaws or missed opportunities to notice beauty? Talk to God about this now as a friend. And finally, look ahead to this week. How can God be calling you to use this gift of appreciation of beauty and excellence over the next few days? Speak to God about this now, setting your intention. As we begin to close out this moment of prayer, take a deep breath in and breathe out. Here in the stillness, feel God's love embracing you right now, comforting you as we close out today and bring hope into tomorrow. Amen. Thanks, Siri. So in the chat, I'd love, we would love to hear what maybe the meditation brought up for you and uh, maybe even a resolution. Maybe you were called to um, practice the appreciation of beauty or excellence uh, over the next day or two. For me, so I regularly practice appreciation of beauty and I uh, get up every morning at 6 a.m. Um, well, I'm out by 6 a.m. and do a hike before I see anybody out. And I probably take a couple hundred pictures um, in that hour or two hike. And so it's easy for me to see beauty, but I don't notice the excellence part. So Sari and I are actually different. She, it's easier for her to notice excellence than beauty. And so what came up for me is um, my husband is essentially a rocket scientist. And we're both in lockdown and he is... Um, you know, away from work, and he's choosing to spend his free time learning more math and watching MATLAB videos, and he said to me the other night something about sine theta, cosine theta, does that equal one? Do you remember that? And I, I kind of like, oh, this is so boring, but in the meditation, I realized, like, I need to be celebrating the excellence that he is exhibiting and practicing and he doesn't have to do this for his work he just says i want to be a better engineer and instead of playing and off hiking with me he is um, well, getting in more sleep and then doing that and um and there's also research that says that if we strength spot in our relationships it improves our relationships so this um, meditation just kind of came together and and uh, gave me a really great way of um of practicing that uh, okay, Melissa says, that was beautiful each morning. She starts with her rescue cat gently climbing atop her chest and awaking. She curls up and purrs and starts her day with unconditional love. Oh. Yeah. And what about you, Sari? Do, does something come up for you? Yeah, well, so. Allow other people to share. Yeah, as, as people are putting that in the chat, um, I, I agree. Catherine and I just, we like have flipped where I tend to have to be more intentional when I notice and stop and notice and smell the roses, right? Um, and so I think on my morning walks this week, I'm gonna try to be more intentional about 
like not listening to things while I'm walking. Sometimes I can like put on a podcast or, you know, call a friend. Um, and I think that takes me away from noticing the natural beauty. Um, and so I'm going to be more intentional by like having moments of silence on those walks. Um, and that was really coming up for me during, during the meditation. Excellent. Okay. Well, we have five minutes left. So do you want to just yeah. lay out the steps that you went through? Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the steps. Um, when Catherine and I were thinking about like what, how, how can we like, you know, in general apply this across different different faith um, and spiritual traditions, I think we came up with three easy steps um, and we tried to make them all start with C. <laughs> so that would be easier to remember. Um, and the first step is connect. So really to identify the, the scientific and spiritual connections within your own faith tradition and the uh, science of virtue and character strengths. Um, and so as you saw with our virtue mapping, uh, we found connections to the seven virtues in Catholicism um, and as you saw with the global survey, like many different wisdom traditions were consulted um, and looked at. And so lots of, lots of times these faith practices um, have, have these connections in common already. And so the first step is to find the connections within your own faith or spiritual tradition. The second step is to find a mechanism to practice. So really to find that outlet. Um, and we said create a practice, but you don't have to necessarily create. Um, we just modified a practice. Um, and so as you saw, the examens, you know, been used for the last few hundred years. Um, we found a centuries old spiritual practice and modified it to center around a specific character strength. Um, and as you noticed, as you were listening, we also included some holy scripture that we align to the character strength as well. Um, and so if that is something that exists in your faith or spiritual practice, that might be another good um, outlet to make those connections. And then finally, the last um, we put community there, but we really are encouraging you to share it. Um, and this is totally optional, but we know that the effects um, are even greater when we share share with others. Um, and uh, Catherine and I, like a, as an example, we started to meet up um, with a group for the last month or so daily where we would practice the exam in together and then um, talk about virtue and character strengths in our lives um, and really set intentions together um, and hold each other accountable. Uh, to really strength spotting and that strengths practice. Yeah, we called it Vino and Virtue because as people were going in lockdown, they were struggling at home living out virtue, maybe with their family or their children that they were now homeschooling. So people would grab a glass of wine uh, if, if they chose, and then we would just do the meditation and share, kind of like what we're doing with you. And then we had a 24-hour challenge to try to practice that single strength. So we did all 24 and it was and um, it was super impactful, and we just finished it, and I sadly missed it. So I'm glad to be on this uh, Zoom call with y'all. Yeah. So I think that, like, just to close out, um, like thinking about this question, how might you bring this character strengths practice uh, with you into your own faith or spiritual tradition? Um, and so, if you want to just have a close out sharing in the chat box, um, and or any other questions you might have. Um, so thinking about like how I might apply this to my own spiritual or faith tradition or any other questions that you have remaining that Catherine and I can stay on the line for. Thanks, Siri. I'll just take a few minutes and see if anyone has anything else they want to share in the chat. Well, it looks like that's it. So thank you, Siri, for this moment of appreciating beauty and excellence in the middle of the day. I think I'm going to start doing my examines earlier. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a nice, like, 3 p.m., uh, like, hiatus, right? Yeah, I think Ignatius did it at noon and at night so that he could course correct uh, in the middle of the day so he didn't have to wait until the next day. Um, she said, any thoughts? As to it seemingly being easier to strength spot and show appreciation to strangers versus friends and family. I don't know. Siri, um, I would love for you to share about how you do it. You work in a secular um, work environment for public schools and how you do it with your, your team, um, how you strength spot. 
Yeah, we do. So we do a character strengths meditation um, every week. And then we, as a team, we, we strength spot in each other. So like shouting each other out for different um, like strengths that we notice. If like, if, for example, if gratitude was our weekly strength, we might be shouting each other out for gratitude that week um, when we're seeing it practiced or like our, ourselves practicing that gratitude. But I don't know, Melissa, like, like that's a really good question. If there's research around strengths, like appreciation of strangers versus friends and family, and if um, one or the other is easier to do. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know that research. Yeah, and usually a lot of the research is you already know what the signature strengths are, let's say in your spouse, then it's easier to call those to mind or to your children. There's research and there's a book out on strength-based parenting. Um, so you already are primed with that. So in some ways that's easier, but it's, you know, I don't, it, I think it also depends on where you live. We both live in the South and it's so much easier to talk to a stranger and point something out. Like it's a cultural norm. So anyway, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Oh, it's the bright and beauty and excellence. <laughs> Yeah, the excellence I totally did, wasn't even on my radar until I started working with Sari. Yeah. <gasps> Thanks, Stephanie. Okay, well, I think that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I think a lot of you have my email. If you have any other um, follow-up questions or thoughts, we would love to hear it. So thanks and enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great start to the week, guys. <laughs>